What is up, comic and pop culture fans? Today we got a really awesome video. We are talking about second prints being more valuable than the first print. It happens only about one in maybe a thousand times, but today we're going to dive into those one in a thousands with these top ten. Alright guys, I can't wait to get into this. This was really fun to research for this video today because in my research I found I have a couple of these. So without further ado, let's start the countdown at number 10. Let's start it at that number 10 with Amazing Spider-Man 638. This is the one moment in time arc and it actually made Pete and Mary Jane's wedding non-canon, which was a Bit of a weird decision, but nonetheless. A first print of this goes for about $50 in a CGC 9.8 high. Not bad, but the second print here is very notable for having a giant stupid looking O in the middle of the page. And this was actually recalled because they thought it was a dumb idea. And very few made it over into the States at all. Uh, they were going to spell out one moment in time, omit, which also is a reference to them omitting the wedding from continuity. Never, never happened, but they did release this first second print with a giant O in the middle. Looks absolutely stupid, but because it's a recall, it ended up being more valuable than that first print. Second prints tend to sell for about 120 bucks of these in a CGC 9.8, making it $70 more valuable than the first print. Next up, number nine, another Amazing Spider-Man. You're gonna see a couple Spider-Mans on here for sure, um, but it's the Deadpool Speaks cover. Now, it's a really funny cover, honestly, where it's Spidey and Deadpool, and on the cover, it shows Spidey's in all these pockets and gadgets and all this stuff. And Deadpool makes a joke that basically they're making fun of how all the 90s costumes look. Everybody looked ridiculous. They put pockets and patches and pouches on everybody. And, you know, they're making fun of that here. But in the first print, Deadpool has no word bubble. It's just a Deadpool logo. So in the second print, it's just way better because he's actually saying a joke and making fun of the 90s, and it's funny. So this is one of those ones where the second print is honestly just better, so I feel like this is definitely an earned bump up over the first. First print sells for $85 in a CGC 9.8, and the second print sells for $180. That's $95 over the first print. Next up, we're at number eight with Justice League One from the New 52. Um, even, uh, covers alone, guys, you're gonna wanna read that arc. It was just amazing. But it was actually a very common book. It was mass produced. So a CGC 9.8 of this first issue, first printing, it's only like a $42 book. But the second printing was a landscape portrait of all the JLA members and it was just so good looking. It's become very iconic. I've seen it in art prints now and a CGC 9.8 of those sells for $220 making it $178 more valuable than its first print. Number seven, we're talking Walking Dead and this is a weird one because a lot of Walking Dead reprints, second prints, are more valuable than the first one. It's this almost weird, exclusive Walking Dead thing. I'm going to give you a couple examples. Walking Dead 33 is Michonne getting her revenge on the governor. A uh, pretty cool book, um, but the second cover, the only thing that's different in the second printing is that it's blue and the first printing is red. That's it. Now the first print, that red one, they sell for 80 bucks. This second print, just because it's blue, and you know, it's a lower print count, sells for $300, making a $220 game. Is that justified? Probably not. Walking Dead 34, also, same thing. Although this one I think kind of looks cooler. The regular cover was pink, 
and the second print was kind of like a sepia, sepia? I have no idea how you pronounce that. But the regular sells for only 42 the second print sells for 258 so the second print is $216 more valuable than that first. Keep in mind, they're reprinting all of the Walking Dead comics in color. You know how Walking Dead, on the inside pages, it's been black and white? They're redoing the whole thing in color. So, taking a look at how frequently Walking Dead second prints become more valuable than the first, you might want to invest in that. Number six, the DC Universe logo books. This has me really excited because I have a bunch of these. Sadly, from when I was a kid, and they're red to shit. DC Comics released really popular titles in second, third, fourth, and even fifth prints. And they actually sold it to retailers like Toys R Us and things like that more designed to go to kids. And in these packs, it had a different DC logo. So these things are incredibly rare, but more importantly, they're near impossible to track down how many were made. So if you come across the DC logo in the wild, grab that book. It could be a dollar bin book. That DC Universe logo might bump your comic up a hundred bucks. Man of Steel 18 in this, the first appearance of Doomsday. A normal CGC 9.8 of this sells for 70 bucks, but the fifth print is this DC logo variant, and that sells for 300 bucks, making that a $230 profit over the regular first appearance, first printing book. Green Lantern 50 is a $100 book, and those are selling for 300 if you have this second print with the DC Universe logo, and I actually have it and I'm gonna be submitting that to CGC. Same thing with Green Lantern 51, first appearance of Kyle Rayner in the full new suit. It's a $70 book in a CGC 9.8, the first printing, but if you find that DC logo, they have sold for $370, making a $300 profit. And now, a short video montage showing you all my DC Universe books that I read about 500 times and look like they've been eaten by a cat. Next up, number five. This is a pretty famous one. As we get closer to number one, you might start to recognize some of these. This is Batman 608. This started the Hush storyline. And even just regular old Batman 608, the first printing goes from 85 all the way to 100 bucks sometimes. I've owned a couple copies of those at least. Um, but the second print has a more iconic cover. It is Jim Lee. That Batman standing on the gargoyle, it's just, it's so classic. The, my local comic book shop has it on their store logo. Uh, it's just amazing looking. I owned this once and I sold it. That was probably dumb. These second prints go for an average of $476. That's a $391 gain over the first print. This next one, number four, makes me a little bit mad because I scoured the internet to try to find out why this is so valuable and I couldn't find it. This is Batman 500. I have a 9.8 of Batman 500 right here and I have a 9.8 of the Detective Comics 664 homage variant right here. Now, the second print is actually a reprint of this cover. So why are they selling for $500? This is a $50 book. The second print sells for $500. The only thing different about it is it's colored a little bit more brightly. Why is this selling for so much more? I don't know. Look who stole the spot back with number three. We're back to Amazing Spider-Man, this time ASM. 569 this is the first appearance of anti-venom really cool book but the second print 
flexed on that first print so hard that it actually showed anti-venom on the cover, making it a significant gain over the first print. How much of a gain, you ask? A CGC 9.8 of the first print goes for 170 bucks. The second prints of these sell for $1,000. That is an $830 gain over the first print. Yeah, we're getting into the top two. Some of you seasoned collectors are going to know these before I even mention them. But here we go with number two. This is the Incredible Hulk 377 from 1991. The first and second print were released those years, and it's a cool cover, you know, good color scheme and everything, looks good, decent story inside. But three years later, a extremely low print run available only in North America was produced. And most of it is circulating only in Canada. And this was the third print of Hulk 337, excuse me, 377. And because it's so rare and a slightly different color scheme, collectors go mad for this. How mad? Well, a first print in a 9.8 CGC white pages sells for about 120 bucks. Third print averages 2347 dollars. That is a gain of $2,227 over your first print. So guys, if you have a Hulk 377 at your home, take a look at that. You might want to see if that's a third print because you might be sitting on like a three grand book. And that brings us to number one, Captain Marvel 17, the first full appearance of Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, in her Ms. Marvel costume and showing her superpowers. Ms. Marvel's full costume debut is in Marvel Point One in January of 2014. But in Captain Marvel, the second print, you actually get to see on the cover of all places, her first appearance in costume and showing her powers right on the cover. And it was released in December of 2013 just before. Also, it's worth noting that the pose that she does on this cover is very iconic. I went to see the Marvel Museum at the Franklin Institute this past summer, and Ms. Marvel was in there striking this exact pose. So how valuable is this thing? Well, a first print of this sells for 90 bucks. That's it, just 90 bucks. The second print sells for $2,400 dollars with highs occasionally getting into the five thousand dollar range using just the average sale of this second print that's a gain of two thousand three hundred and ten dollars over the first print holy so guys check your books let's see what you got do you have these let me know in the comments if you actually have any of these books but moreover, I want to know if any of you have those DC Universe logos sitting around. They're worth money, and you don't even know it. Nobody knows it. Get them graded. Guys, thanks so much for watching. This video was a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to research, and pretty sad at times, but pretty cool at times, too. So, I hope you guys had a good one. I'm actually going to the beach, so I'll be at the beach when, I, when this airs. Um, recording this a little bit early so the next time you see me I'm going to be extremely sunburned because the Irish part of me will take over for sure and I'll probably have a lot less money so guys until next time this is James from Minhammer Comics and keep on collecting